This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Saturday, December 7th. It was cool in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch in the business office division. The boss is Captain Stanley. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. At 4.20 p.m., the Los Angeles office of the United States Weather Bureau had contacted Sergeant Jim Slagle in the BOD. There had been a strong earthquake in the Sea of Japan. The resultant tidal wave, size unknown, would hit Southern California beaches at midnight. I checked with Coast Guard operations in Long Beach. They've got a weather ship stationed off the Aleutian Islands. Still haven't sighted the wave. I've asked them to keep us advised. Richter scale reading of 7.2, quite a shaker. Yeah, good thing it was offshore. Any damage in Japan? From the quake, no, but the sea wave was bad. First reports say a lot of casualties. And we've got a quarter of a million people living in beachfront homes. Friday, Captain. Good evening, sir. Captain. I just talked with the chief. He wants a signal alert prepared in case we need it. Now, you have the file again, and you draft the words. Yes, sir. Play it low-key. We want cooperation, not panic. For now, we're just asking residents and motorists alike to stay away from beach areas. If they're already there, we want them to leave. Assure residents the area is being heavily patrolled. And you might mention this. The chief's ordered roadblocks prepared in case we start to get a load of sightseers. That's it. And I want it five minutes ago, Bill. Yes, sir. We won't open the ECC, not yet anyway, but I want the crew on standby. The same with the mobile command post. We may need them both. Yes, sir. Want me to stick around a while, sir? Gonna be home in case we need you? Yes, sir, all night. Right now, we just wait for more reports, maybe hours before we can do anything else. Yes, sir. By the way, Joe, did you see the demonstrators out front on the way in? A great protest. It never seems to end, does yeah, it? Yeah, about 50 of them at last count. I saw them. I noticed in the log they'd like the use of the hall, huh? Intelligence picked up a copy of their plan. It's there on the counter. Good. Well, good night, gentlemen. So long, Jim. Joe, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Father Frank Barnes. Father? Sergeant Joe Friday. Nice to meet you, Sergeant. The father's writing an article on law enforcement for a secular magazine. He wants to look over your shoulder tonight. Glad to have you. If I get in your way, just holler. No problem. I just hope you're better with words than you used to be with your fish. That I can guarantee. Another graduate from your boxing team, Captain? Graduate in my eye. Drop out. I've made two good decisions in my life. And the first one was when I hung up those gloves. Well, this is it, Father, the BOD. Forgive me, but it looks more like the police department's front porch than a business office. It is, but that's our business, Father, those people out there. Keep on top of that tidal wave thing, Friday. The chief wants periodic reports. Yes, sir, will do. And as for you, champ, keep your hands high and your elbows in. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Hey, you've got a visitor, Friday. Sergeant Friday. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. You're right on time this afternoon, Henry. Hey, what's going on? You starting up a mission here? We've been giving it some thought. Sure be great. We could use another one. You mean you could? What's the count today, Henry? Four. Only four. I'm on a health kick. <laughs> Tapering off. Glad to hear it. I'm not throwing them in the street. You notice that, Father? I bring them in here, and they throw them away. That's Sergeant Friday. Henry never throws bottles in the street. You can make book on it. Anything looks terrible, it's bottles laying in the street. I sure ain't no little bug. You mean litter bug. That's what I said. Do I look pale, Sergeant? No, not particularly. I feel awful pale, Joe. When'd you eat last? Five days ago. I sure could use a little M.T. Henry's here. Right on schedule. All right, Henry. Have a seat over there. Oh, don't bother, Joe. I don't need any transportation. I can walk. We'll give you a ride. Sure don't like to hit the taxpayer up no more than I have to. Good luck with the mission. What did he mean, M.T.? Medical treatment. Henry's got diabetes. Sent for receiving, we'll clean him up, give him treatment. We'll give him a hot meal at the jail. I think I like Henry. 
I gave Father Barnes the department manual outlining the various BOD functions. 4.40 p.m., officers Charles and Blodgen began alerting duty crews for the mobile command post and the emergency control center in the event the impending tidal wave was to hit. Sigler just went out. Cabin wants it updated as fast as we can get new information. Did you call a comm center? Right. They'll screen all incoming phone calls. Otherwise, we'd be up to our ears. Yeah. Seattle PD's talking to the Coast Guard radio station up in Ketchikan, Alaska. The weather ship still hasn't sighted the wave. Joe. Can I help you people? Yeah, man, you certainly can. By removing those two uniformed stormtroopers you got out in front of the door. You're a little confused, aren't you? Those men are police officers. And I'm a citizen with a perfect right to enter this building. All right, you're in here, aren't you? Now, what can I do for you? There are 48 more citizens just like us on the sidewalk outside. And they've been refused the right to come through those doors. I know. We've got it all logged. I bet you do. Together with some brand new laws written just for the occasion. No, ma'am. Old laws, then. Resurrected to persecute young people and stifle dissent. Keep moving, don't obstruct pedestrian traffic, stay out of the building. Nazi tactics, exactly the kind of thing we're protesting. Well, now, no one's stopping you, are they? Oh, wow, man, you don't get it at all, do you? We want to protest in here, in this building. Now, if you allow us to come in and speak for the group, why can't the group itself come in? It's a public building, man. We got just as much right here as you have. No, you haven't, fella. Not when you've declared your intention to interfere with the transaction of public business. Now, here it is in purple and white. And where'd you get that? You gave it to us. Your plans to demonstrate here in the police building, including instructions to lie down in the lobby and in front of the elevators. Well, so what? Your expressed intentions are in violation of Section 602J of the Penal Code, State of California. Now, we've got a copy. Would you like to read it? Oh, wow, big deal. It's part of my job to protect your right to protest. There's only one hitch. You'll do it within the law or you'll go to jail. That means you'll do it outside. You will not obstruct pedestrian traffic in or out of this building. You'll keep on the sidewalk and you'll keep moving. And don't poke anyone in the eye with those signs. Don't be abusive. Don't disturb the peace. When you do, you violated the rights of others. That's what breaking the law means. You don't have that privilege, nor does anybody else. Now, is that clear? Perfectly. Let's go, baby. Someday we'll rewrite that law. And we'll also take away all this Gestapo muscle. Right, love. Another example of police brutality. Looks like it's gonna be one of those nights. Kinda looks that way, doesn't it? Bill, this is Father Frank Barnes, my partner Bill Gannon. How are you, Bill? So you're gonna make us famous, huh, Father? I kind of doubt that. Well, let's see if Bill and I can explain what goes on around here. From what I've seen already, I'd say a little bit of everything. Kind of a police department smorgasbord, right, Joe? That's about it. It goes something like this. When the office of the chief of police is closed, the BOD here acts as the department command post. We act for the chief or at his direction. That includes opening the emergency control center and the mobile command post during unusual occurrences. Like tidal waves. Situation warrants, yes, sir. Our information counter there is for service to the general public. A citizen has a complaint, wants to report a crime or talk about a traffic matter. We interview him. I see. The BOD accepts and approves all crime, traffic, and arrest reports that may involve any division here in the building. Let me ask you something. Suppose a man's arrested for robbery in downtown L.A. Exactly what happens then? Central Division across the hall takes care of the booking. We check the arresting officer's report for completeness and accuracy. It goes to Robbery Division upstairs. They take it from there. If the suspect is released on bail, we handle the paperwork. Business office, Friday. I can't hear you, lady. Could you speak up? What's the matter? How long ago? All right, where do you live? What's your address? Well, do you know the number? What about your telephone number? Just read it off the telephone, lady. That's right. Repeat that, please. Yes, all right, I have it. No, don't hang up. Just keep talking. Just keep talking to me, lady. What is it, Joe? Woman up in Laurel Canyon claims her boyfriend shot her an hour ago and left her for dead. Laurel Canyon where? She doesn't know. While I kept the injured woman on the line, Bill called the telephone company. When an apparent threat to human life exists, the telephone company cooperates fully with the Los Angeles Police Department. In a matter of moments, Bill had the information we needed. He called the communications division. A black and white was dispatched, code three, to an address in Laurel Canyon. 6 p.m., I approved an arrest report on a felony hit and run suspect. 
Seattle PD. Tidal waves passing the Aleutian Islands. How's it look? Not too good. Heavy damage to some isolated villages. Must be a heck of a big wave. Not necessarily. What do you know about it, champ? Well, I spent two years in the Aleutians with the Army. Some of those villages are so exposed, it wouldn't take much of a wave to knock them out. Is that right? Here you are, Bill. The media people probably already have this, but update your signaler just in case. Yes, sir. You learning anything, Father? Enough to become a little depressed, I'm afraid. Only a little. Sergeant Friday. Telephone, George. Thanks, Olson. This is Friday. Yeah, Wally. What do you got? Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, we tried. Report from Laurel Canyon. That girl? She's dead. So she was telling the truth, huh? No, she shot herself. Her boyfriend was married. God have mercy on her. And the boyfriend could use a little, too. He showed up. That's right, with a bus ticket in his pocket. To where? Tijuana. And the girl was pregnant. Six thirty p.m. I checked with Scripps Institute of Oceanography in La Jolla, California. The tidal wave was rolling unchecked across the North Pacific. Scientists at Scripps were operating a constant monitor on the wave. Bill made the call around to all divisions. Beach areas were being alerted to be ready to evacuate. You, young man. Yes, ma'am, can I help you? I'm Gertrude Morrison. Mrs. Gertrude Morrison? Sergeant Friday, Mrs. Morrison. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, this won't take a moment, Sergeant Friday. I've come to apply for my Christmas lights. Mm. I beg your pardon? My outdoor Christmas lights. I'm giving you plenty of time, almost a year. You can deliver them any day in the week, from now until next December 1st. I'd like to get them a birdie, you know. Outdoor Christmas lights. Everybody on the block has them except me. Now, that's just not right, Sergeant Friday. Well, now, did your neighbors tell you the police department supplied the lights? They didn't have to. They figured it out myself. Nobody on my street could possibly afford outdoor Christmas lights. So I said to myself, it has to be the city, the police department. Who else? Well, I'm very sorry, Miss Morrison, uh, but we... Joe, may I? Now, Mrs. Morrison, if I can have your home address, I'll see to it personally that you get those Christmas lights. Thank you so much. I knew I came to the right place. Sergeant Friday? Joe, this is Mr. Diedrich and his son, Ray. Sergeant Friday. Sergeant? Mr. Diedrich, Ray. They'd like to know if they could tour Central Jail. Why do you want to do that, Mr. Diedrich? Well, let's call it a get acquainted tour for Ray here. Because that's where he's headed if he doesn't shape up. I've heard you people give such tours. Come on, cool it, Dad, will you? You ever been in trouble, son? Fifth Amendment. I see. He knows all about the Fifth Amendment. How about it, son? You want to go to jail? For how long? Suit yourself. Half an hour? Why not? You want to take him through? Right. Thank you, Sergeant. One thing, Ray. What's that? This trip's on the house, and you only get one. Yeah? Next time you pay. You get many requests like that? Not nearly enough. Well, hello, Mr. Farrell. Yeah, how are you, Bill? Can't complain. You got some papers for me? Four, to be exact. Business pretty good, huh? It is tonight. Mr. Farrell, meet Father Barnes. Father's doing a magazine article on the BOD. Mr. Farrell's a bail bondsman. How do you do, Mr. Farrell? Quite well, thank you. Mr. Farrell specializes in bookies. They get busted, he bails them out. Claims he's never lost a cent on them. He means hardly ever. That's very interesting. Why bookies? Mm, most honest people in the world, Father. Operate on the same principle you do, faith. I never really thought about it. Horses, bookies, faith. Can't have one without the other two. I'll admit, it's a different kind of trinity, all right. These are what are called fixed bail releases. Mr. Farrell guarantees his customers will appear in court. Backs up his judgment with money, bail. When the order is signed by a municipal judge, we can release the prisoners. Great word, Faith. Amen to that. 8 p.m. We checked the police teletype. There was nothing new on the tidal wave. 8.15 p.m. I answered the call that BOD personnel dread most. An officer involved shooting. What's the story, Joe? Mark at 211. Suspects were fleeing west on 6th Street. A black and white started pursuit. Both vehicles made a left turn southbound on San Pedro. The suspects hit a lamp post. They jumped out and started shooting. The officers returned fire. Anybody hit? One suspect dead, one officer badly wounded. Call the chief. To 
The suspect is a male Caucasian, about 25. The weapon he used was a 38 caliber revolver. The suspect fired three shots. Two of them hit the officer in the stomach. The market they robbed, anybody hurt there? No. The other suspect didn't shoot at all, is that right? He surrendered. When do we get the wounded officer's name? After we notify his wife. What's the matter? Can't you find her? We're working on it. What do you mean? Is she out of town? That's right. Doing what? Attending her mother's funeral. The latest from the Weather Bureau. Wave hit the Washington coast about five minutes ago. No estimate yet of damage. That gives us about three hours. Exactly. I'll check the beaches. Just finished. We're in good shape there. Air One says the alert's in full force from Newport to Zuma. I think we ought to establish an open line with the San Francisco PD about 10 o'clock. What do you think? Good idea. Any damage up north will open the ECC immediately. Yes, sir. Carter looks busy. Better give him a hand. How are you getting along, Father? You know, I never realized that a shooting involving an officer was so involved. Very few people do. It says here that when a policeman fires his gun, any place but on the practice range, the BOD has to notify 21 individuals and agencies. That's right. Police commissioners, the chief, the mayor's office, city councilman, the city attorney's office, and so on. I just never thought so many people got involved. They do. Any word on that wounded officer's condition? Critical. He's still in surgery. Sergeant Friday, I just wanted to say thanks. I was beginning to think they locked you two up. No chance, not me. What'd you think of our hotel, son? Well, you can have it and 30 points. I think it was your guests that really got to them. Quite an assortment, aren't they? Yeah. Don't bother saving me a room. Thanks, Sergeant. Don't thank me. Thank your dad. I intend to. All right, sir. Now, let me see if I've got this straight. Officer, could we talk quietly about this? There's a lot of people around here. I understand. You've lived with a girl for two years. Now, what's the question? In California, there's a law. You live with a woman six months, it's a common law marriage. But I'm already married, legally married. Now, let me get this straight. You're married to one woman, but you're living with another woman? Yes, sir, that is correct. You know what adultery is? Adultery? There's a law against that, you know. Oh, there's a law against everything. Me, I'm only worried about a legal marriage, a common law marriage. OK, what do you want to know? One thing. Can I be arrested for bigamy? About your common law marriage, Mr. Morris, there's no such statute on the books in the state of California. It's not bigamy you ought to be worrying about. What should I be worrying about? Your wife. You started me thinking, officer. Good for you. You really started me thinking. Be seeing you. Grab a cup of coffee? You can't. Why not? You got a customer. You feeling all right? Well, hello there, boy. What's your name? You got a name, little boy? I think we got a communications problem. We do. Lost children pose a continuing problem for BOD personnel. This one had appeared like all the rest out of nowhere. I thought he belonged to the man you were talking to. Uh-uh. Kid's too smart. How can you tell? Look at those eyes. See them sparkle? Sign of intelligence. Lots of it. You're real sure about that, are you? Well, I can tell you've never been around kids, Joe. Right, Olson? Well, I used to be one once. How about it, Father? Do you speak any Spanish? I'm afraid not. You think he might understand Latin? I think he might understand an ice cream cone. How about that? You want some ice cream? You got yourself a customer. Bribery, pure and simple. I'll spring for the ice cream. Oh, it's a deal. Will you cover my window, Joe? Right. Can you imagine letting a little guy like that out of your sight? No, but I guess they can move pretty fast, can't they? Like lightning. Let's wait about an hour, and then we'll call juvenile division. Right. Can I help you, ma'am? Yes, sir. I want to get my husband out of jail. I don't know why I should, but they don't grow on trees. Can I help you, sir? Tender little tableau down there, you and that kid. Now are you ready to transact some police business? Your name, sir? John Franklin. I'm from New York City. Sergeant Friday, Mr. Franklin. And that child was my business. Sure, sure. You just get me your boss. That's all you have to do. My boss? The chief of police. What do you want to see him about, sir? You just got finished telling me you had your business. Well, I got mine. And it's with the chief of police, not a sergeant or a captain. In that case, sir, I'm afraid I can't help you. The chief's not here. I see. Well, Sergeant Friday, you'd better go get him before I blow my brains out right here in front of you. Give me
me the gun, Mr. Franklin. I'll give you 10 minutes to get the chief of police. That's what I'll give you. Then I shoot. All right, you win. But you'll have to put it in writing. I'm not writing anything. Just your name. Just sign this request form. I'm not signing anything. My hand's busy. Hand me the gun, Franklin. After I've used it, it's all yours. Take a look around you, Franklin. If that slug passes through and hits one of these marble walls, it could ricochet. What if it hits that child? Are the other people here? You don't want to hurt any innocent people, do you? Now, come on. Give me the gun, Franklin. No, you're wrong. The bullet won't hurt anybody but me. Who's the expert here, you or me? Now, let's talk. I can give it to you in one line. They're out to kill me. Who is? That gang in New York. They're from another planet. Not Mars, another one. I can never think of the name. Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Jupiter. That's the one. I came all the way out here to get away from them. Where did you live in New York, Mr. Franklin? Bellevue Hospital. Why did you leave? Well, I had to. They were after me. I told you I ran away. You should have stayed. You were safe there. You know, you just may be right. I should have stayed where I was. They're smart. But they'd never think to look in a hospital, not a big hospital like Bellevue. Safest place in the world. Let me ask you something. If I wanted to get in a hospital out here, do you think the chief could help me? That's why I want to see him. You don't have to see the chief. I'll help you. Ten p.m. I checked with the Weather Bureau. The tidal wave had done only minor damage in Washington and Oregon. Ten minutes earlier, it had rolled ashore in Northern California. The only damage was to a few small boats in an exposed harbor. That sounded encouraging. Yeah, the Weather Bureau doesn't think the wave will amount to much by the time it gets down here. How about this character? You think he'll amount to much? I wouldn't know, Father. That's your department. I'm just a cop. Just talked to the hospital officer. Ryan is still in surgery. They locate his wife? She'll be there when he gets out of the operating room. Doctors give him a 50-50 chance. I've been praying for him. Thanks, Chen. Weather Bureau thinks our tidal wave could turn out to be a ripple. I know. Coast Guard called a minute ago from Monterey. They're thinking about canceling their alert. Chief wants to wait a while, but he's decided not to open the ECC. Sorry, little fella, but I guess you'll be sleeping in a strange bed tonight, won't you? Juvenile's on the way over. Huh. My baby! My baby! <laughs> The small boy's name was Manuel Alvarez. The family had been visiting Alvera Street, the city's most important landmark, located a short distance from the police administration building. The child had disappeared. He'd apparently wandered into Parker Center purely by accident. 12.05 AM. The night watch ended. The morning watch would take over. We got one last phone call. Yes. Yeah, I understand. PNF ward. The wounded officer, Ryan, he just asked for the last rites. How far is the hospital? There's a priest there now. Good, let's go. But there's already one priest there. It's all right, Joe. We have a strong union. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. Every Metropolitan Police Department has a business office division or the equivalent. In your city, it might be the desk sergeant or the precinct captain. But regardless of title, the personnel work 24-hour, around-the-clock duty. It is this ceaseless dedication to the job at hand that helps maintain your police department's pulse beat. Another way in which these men and women serve and protect the public that pay their salaries.